From the traditional and unceded territory of the Clay Claytonay First Nation and the heart of Northern BC, welcome to the CNC Podcast, 50 years, 100,000 alumni. At CNC, we're learning together, changing lives and creating futures. Welcome to the CNC Podcast. I'm Mark Cargillotto. At CNC, we want to make sure that anyone who wants to learn can be accommodated at the college. And accessibility needs are important. About a quarter of Canadians over the age of 15 will have an accessibility need. So that means we have staff in the college working very closely with prospective students to make sure that their needs can be accommodated and that they can be successful. And one such person who is working very closely with students is Christine Hoffmeyer, who joins us from the North Caribou campus of CNC in Quinnell. Christine is a recruitment uh, and academic advisor with the college and that, and we're thrilled to have you on the podcast. Thanks for coming along. Well, thank you so much, Mark. It's lovely to be here. Do you want to tell me a little bit about your work then? Uh, what, uh, uh, when do you get to meet students who might have an accessibility need and how do you work with them? Um, well, I've been working at the Quinnell campus here for about five years, um, and I cover a number of different roles. So I could have an accessibility student arrive in my office at any time. Um, I meet with the students for academic advising, and uh, sometimes it just naturally evolves from a conversation, and then we go from there. When it comes to accessibility needs, then, can you describe that range of needs that you would be supporting with a student? Uh, because my understanding is that there are accessibility needs that are sometimes visible, but there are many, uh, many others that frankly are not visible. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and at CNC, we will endeavor to support everything. The goal is the removal of barriers overall in the educational setting. So that could be something in the, in the classroom you know, with the instruction or how students are assessed, or it could be in our general environment um, with wheelchair access or a specialized table or things like that. So there are many different needs that we support here at the college. There's probably misconceptions about accessibility needs and whatnot. What are the most common ones that come to mind for you? Um, I think in terms of misconceptions, there are misconceptions at a number of different levels. So in people with disabilities, Sometimes there's still a feeling of stigma around their disability, um, which can cause them a number of different um, feelings, a concern that they won't be supported the way that they need to be supported, or that the term accommodations means that somehow the classroom material is being watered down and that's simply not the case. Um, There's also kind of misconceptions in the general public sometimes that individuals with disabilities Um, don't have a lot to contribute, but they do. There's a lot of different abilities and strengths that everyone can bring to the table, right? Um, And then uh, um, also in terms of, you know, faculty or administrative staff, sometimes people feel it's not up to them to change, to meet someone's needs, but that's definitely what we're here for is to adapt to the needs um, of all of our students, not just in the classroom, but in the systems that we have in our institutions. No, that's all great points there. When you're speaking with a prospective student or uh, or even someone who would be supporting them, what's the most important thing that you want them to know? Well, the most important thing is not to be afraid to start the conversation. That's the most important thing. Um, and we encourage students to meet with accessibility staff as soon as they can. You know, four months before you plan to start schooling would be great. Um, sometimes it's possible to get things lined up in a couple of months, but the more time we have to work together to make sure that things can be set up for the student to help them be successful, that's really important. Um, it's also important to know that no question is silly. There's nothing that you could ask me that, that I, I would think would be silly. Um, a lot of people find that their experience here at CNC is quite different from what they've experienced in the past in, for example, a high school. And that How is that? Quite- Um, sometimes in high school systems, there may be a lack of support. Maybe it's a lack of resources. Um, maybe students just get pushed through and that's not our goal here. Our goal is to really support the students, um, thoroughly in, to be as as successful as they can in their college endeavors. So in starting that conversation, as you've indicated, more time is better, but how does a student uh, start that conversation? Do they give you a call? Do they send an email? What, what would you recommend? They can do either, whatever works for them. Um, 
So in terms of accessibility services, there is um, a dedicated accessibility advisor at the Prince George campus who supports Prince George and other smaller regional campuses. Um, I work primarily with students at the Quinnell campus. Um, and there's a number of ways to contact us that could be with an email, that could be with a phone call. It could be popping down in person to book an appointment, whatever works best for the student. Can you tell me about that first appointment and then how the process unfolds from there? So when you first meet a student, what do you talk about? Um, uh, my first step with a student is to get to know a bit more about them. You know, uh, what they've experienced in the past, what their goals are, what they're feeling passionate about or what they're feeling worried about, right? It's all about getting to know people as an individual. Um, in the first appointment, it is, of course, important to go over things such as confidentiality and what accessibility services looks like in the college, what things we can provide, and then what steps we need to take to move forward. So getting an understanding with the student of what their needs are and what documentation I would need to be able to support them moving forward. So can you take me through an example of a student's need and then kind of the documentation that typically would go along with that then? What, like, is it a note from their doctor or what exactly? Yeah, so um, in quite a few cases, um, a note from a doctor. So, for example, if a student is coming with something um, such as um, mental health concerns or um, attention deficit disorder or something physical that impacts in the classroom, then going to a doctor or physician to get some documentation is appropriate. If a student um, has something such as a learning difficulty, then that does require an assessment by a psychologist. So that's a bit more involved. Um, yeah, so those would be a couple of individual examples. But you're working with a student to be able to say in this particular circumstance, this is the kind of document, documentation yeah. that you need and then how that goes yeah. forward. Is exactly. there a general standard that the college takes or is that coming from, uh, you know, a provincial law or, or guidance or how, how is it that you, that you set the standards in terms of how you can accommodate someone? Oh, in terms of how we can accommodate someone. Yes. Um, that's... A combination really that's driven in a lot of cases by the documentation. What we're looking for is functionally how, you know, how does a student actually work in the classroom environment and what they need. And that comes from the documentation. Um, uh, sorry, Mark, I think you had a second point there and I've lost that in my mind. No, I think that that's all fair enough. It's okay. it's sort of it's sort of a matter of how is that standard set, and and it, yeah. it sounds like there's a bit of variance that between what a student ultimately needs, and that's 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 all fair enough. Yeah. Um, what about then after you've done the assessment, you've met with the student, you have the documentation? What does it? Can you take an example and indicate in a classroom what might that? involve for a student? Uh, you touched on mental health a little bit earlier. Uh, if there are some other examples you could offer, that's great too. Yeah. Um, so for example, once we have the documentation, um, then we would meet with the student again to specifically discuss what accommodations um, we can offer them in the classroom and to come to an agreement. Um, and then the accommodations, so those would be changes um, or adaptations in the classroom, outside of the classroom. That's something that the, the accessibility staff communicates directly with other staff. So it could be the actual instructor of the classroom, or perhaps the student needs more tutoring, then we would help connect the student with, with those supports. But at that point, it's strictly talking about the accommodations, not about a diagnosis or anything personal, and that's important for the student to understand. Um, You're trying to keep their information basically just to what's needed to accommodate them so they don't yes. have to share further yeah, beyond what exactly. they yeah, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 I understand that that would probably be a, a subject that someone wants to, if someone's dealing with an accessibility need that they want to keep that information limited to basically what's needed to help them out. Exactly. Privacy yeah. is extremely important. Yeah. 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 Um, in terms of then with instructors and other services, how do they change to be able to support someone with an accessibility need? Uh, and again, another example would be just terrific. Yeah. Um, so, for example, let's say in the classroom, we have an individual um, with some kind of hearing disability, right? So maybe they have partial hearing. Um, they So in the classroom, um, if an instructor has 
um, clear overheads and PowerPoints and can provide that to the student beforehand, that would be useful as well too. Um, in the case of a hearing difficulty, the student um, could actually have um, what we call the CART services. It's actually transcription services where someone else connects into the classroom with the use of technology uh, with a microphone and types in, in real time as the lecture is occurring. And that's a great thing for individuals with, um, with um, hearing difficulties. Mm -hmm. That's an example in the classroom. You mentioned you've been at the college for five years. How do you think that the approach to accessibility with students has either remained fairly consistent or even hopefully improved over that time? Um, well, the approach, so there's been a number of things that have kind of changed in the college. The range of services that we have available to offer, that has definitely increased. So the CART services that I've mentioned, those is, that's a new thing in the last couple of years. Um, service dogs are now accepted in the college, which is a new service. So there's some different things that have changed for the better. Um, one kind of trend that's affected not only the college, but um, individuals with disabilities overall is that there are fewer volunteers. So sometimes we're looking for volunteers to take notes, even just from the student body, fewer people step forward. And that's a concern. Um, there's definitely been an increase in service requests, especially in the last couple of years. Um, and some of that, an interesting trend is that a number of individuals are being diagnosed as adults with different things, uh, whether, that, whether that's um, attention deficit disorder or something else, um, or even a learning difficulty. And so that's a new trend. You mentioned, for example, that sometimes students volunteer to, uh, uh, to take uh, notes, I presume, for, uh, uh, for their fellow classmates. Yeah. If someone wanted to do that, how could they do that? Do they come and speak with you or another uh, accessibility yes. advisor or what exactly? Absolutely. Yep. That would be the first step is to contact the accessibility department. Yeah. Know. yeah. When it comes to accessibility needs and the college's approach or even working with students or seeing students coming in, what are you optimistic about? Oh, okay. So I'm optimistic about a number of different things. Um, yeah. In the last little while, there has been new legislation, um, both in Canada and BC. And I think that's um, a big step forward. Um, and ensuring that not only post-secondary places, but work environments, and other environments really have at the forefront of their mind, how, how do we um, provide services to individuals with disabilities, right? That's a big step. Um, and kind of integrating that into, into things that we do. So having the Accessibility Week to celebrate the abilities that people have um, that might have different diversity, um, having committees and institutions to, to look at meeting the needs of different individuals. And I, I'm personally quite optimistic that we're hopefully moving forward to what I would call the normalization of, of disabilities. You know, seeing people, we're all unique, we're all different, um, and we all bring different things to the table, and we all need different things in our environment. So that's, those are a couple of the things that I'm optimistic about. That's great. So to sum things up then for students, it sounds like the key points are come forward early, please come forward and don't, uh, don't be worried about this. We're going to work closely with you. We're going to ask you some questions and get some documentation and that we'll work really closely with instructors and other services to, to help uh, make your learning experience happen. Is there anything more that you'd want to add to those? No, no. I just think that, thank you so much for having me today on your podcast, Mark. And um, I'm hoping that this gives people a bit of information um, about what we can do here at the college. And they yeah, start I hope the so conversation. Too. Yeah, I hope so too. And it would be great to have a few more calls coming your way because we certainly want to make sure that the college can be open and accessible for anyone who wants to learn. And uh, thank you very much, Christine, for your time and that. And I wish you all the best. You too. Thank you so much, Mark. <laughs>